In this current electricity lesson, we are going to talk about Ohm's law. These are lesson objectives. Ohm's law. After going through the concept of current electric potential difference and resistance, it's time to link them all together in a relationship. This relationship is known as Ohm's law, where R equals to V over I, where R is the resistance, V is the electric potential difference across the resistance, and I is the current flow. You can be summarized into this picture over here. This means that the ratio of the potential difference over the current is a constant number, and this constant number's value is equivalent to the resistance R. It's actually not an easy understood idea at first glance. However, Ohm's law can be rearranged to be in the following and more easy understood form. I equals to V over R. So instead of R equals to V over I, we just swap the position of I and R and change it into this form, I equals to V over R. This form can be also visually depicted as the following picture. So you see that there are three things. Okay, this is actually the R, the resistance, this is the V, and this is the I. This poor person being pushed by V and being held back by R. We'll come back to this picture in the later slides. Actually, Ohm's law is just a description of what we observe in the electrical circuit when we change the EMF of the battery or we change the resistance of the circuit. In our previous lesson, we know that a high EMF will cause a high current flow in the same circuit. So uh, if you have more battery, you find that a high EMF, we have more current flowing through, as observed in the circuit. And having the same circuit implies that the resistance of the circuit R is unchanged, where we have seen this uh, both like bulbs. And, but, and so looking at I equals to V over R, and assuming that R is unchanged, when V is increased, I is also increased, and they are linearly related. So Ohm's law depicts this behavior by having V at the numerator at the right-hand side of the formula. However, if you do not change the EMF of the battery, but the resistance of the light bulb is changed, so as we increase the resistance, you notice that the current slows down. But, but when the resistance decreases, the current goes bigger again. Ohm's law is describing this feature by placing R at the denominator of the formula, assuming that V remains unchanged. When R of the light bulb goes higher, the I goes lower. The relationship between I and R is inversely related. Looking at back at this picture, now can you have a better idea of how this picture is trying to illustrate of the idea of I equals to V over R? This illustrates that the idea of I that is coming out of the battery depends on depends on V and R. So if V is stronger, the I will be higher because it's able to push more of the I across. But if R is stronger, you find that he's able to restrict the I, so I will be lower. One common misconception is that the current coming out of the battery is constant regardless of what the battery is connected. But in fact, this is wrong. What is the constant is the EMF of the battery V that is constant. Using this simulation, we find that no matter how we change the R, you find that the V is always unchanging. Okay, you can reduce the R, you find that I will increase, or if you reduce, increase the R, I would reduce. Okay, so I and R will always change if you change R, but the V is remaining unchanged. So that's what's meant by the battery not changing its voltage, unless you have changed the battery itself. An energy that I find useful to visualize is using the water fountain energy. 
The water fountain comprises of a water pump and a pipe that has different interior friction. And the speed of the flow of the water can be seen by a water wheel in the pipe. The flow represents the electrical current. The power of the water pump represents the EMF of the battery. And the interior pipe friction represents the resistance of the circuit. When we increase the power of the water pump using a stronger pump, we can actually raise the water to a greater height difference. And thus, though there's no change in the pipe, the water flow will be faster. Likewise, the opposite can happen and the pump is weaker, the water flow will be slower. So this analogy also more or less quite similar to higher EMF V because greater current I leads to greater current I. If we maintain the power of the pump, but we change the pipe to a rougher one, based on our previous lesson, we know that the rougher pipe has a slower flow than the smoother pipe. So again, this is very similar. A higher resistance R will lead to a smaller current flow. So is resistance good or bad? Some students may think that having resistance in the circuit is a bad thing as it slows down the current in the circuit. However, resistance serves important functions in the circuit. In fact, we put in resistance in the circuit using resistors all the time. So actually all these are resistors. It is because without resistance or when R goes to very close to zero will lead to a condition known as short circuit. Using Ohm's law, when R goes to very close to zero, the current gets very large. Okay, so what will happen is that when we reduce the resistance, the current goes faster and faster. But if we reduce the resistance by too much, what will happen is that the current will go so fast and the electrical circuit overheating of the electrical circuit and cause electrical fire to break out. And that's not what we want. So just as the friction in brakes help us to control the speed of the bicycle, resistors help us to control the current flowing in the circuit. We can then control the amount of current flowing to suit our needs and situation using a variable resistance known as a real step. Let's use a simulation of real step. So in this circuit, we see that there's this battery and then there's this resistance and you have a certain light bulb with a certain brightness. Okay. Um, when we can control the amount of resistance, okay, if we feel that the room is too dark, we can lower down the resistance of the light bulb and make it brighter. Okay. But if we feel that the room is too bright, we can lower down the resistance to make it dimmer. Okay, or if you like a romantic setting, you can set it so that the uh, light of the room is dimmer. But if you want to study, you make the light bulb the lower down the resistance so that the light bulb will be brighter. So we can control the amount of brightness by controlling the amount of resistance in this case. So, using a real set, we now can have a light bulb that can vary the brightness to suit our moods and situation. We can have a cooler instead of a light bulb. We use a real set to control a cooler that can be adjusted to be stronger or weaker depending on external temperature. Or we have an electrical motor can that spin faster or slower depending on situation. All these features first by applying the ideas of Ohm's law. This is the end of today's lesson. If you like the QR code or simulation, you can just take a picture of this and you can play with it. Please subscribe and support my channel. For my other physics video lesson arranged according to topics, please visit my blog at boringphysicsteacherswordpress.com. You can subscribe to my channel to be informed when I upload new physics video lessons. Thank you.